Good morning. I apologize for my hair the past couple days. I know it's been a wreck. <laughs> I've not been feeling the greatest. So, um, tonight I will look different, I promise. We're having dinner at the Persian's parents with uh, some, there was a dinner party. So anyway, now that the hair is out of the way, I'm going to show you how to make uh, the breakfast casserole that I make a lot. And the Persian absolutely loves it and he eats the heck out of it. So I make a lot of it. Um, and I love it too. And it's pretty... Uh, Weight Watcher friendly. So, here we go. Um, I don't know the points for it exactly yet. I'm going to have to plug it into my recipe builder and uh, figure it out. But here's where we're starting. We're starting with a bunch of vegetables. And you can pretty much use whatever you've got. Anything that you would like that would go into an omelet, basically. Um, I need to use up my mushrooms that I bought. The spinach is starting to wilt a bit, so I'm going to use that. I have a couple Mexican squash, I have some broccoli and some green onions, some tomatoes, and some little mini baby uh, bell peppers. I'm going to chop all of those up, and I'm going to put them in that bowl. But I'm going to put them in that bowl according to how they cook. So the things that cook the least amount of time, I'm going to put at the bottom, like the spinach and the um, tomatoes don't need to cook very long, and... The onions don't need to cook very long. Basically, what's going on top is the broccoli and the squash and the peppers. Because I want those to cook uh, really nicely and get soft first before I add the other stuff. Because I'm going to saute all this on the stove. So, that's what all that is for. Um, so, I'm going to get to chopping. Okay, so here's the first stage of cooking. I've got... Uh, my Mexican squash, my broccoli, and my... Um, bell peppers in here. I put a tablespoon and a half of oil. Now this is all going to go in a huge 9x9 nine nine pan, so don't be afraid to use some things like oil. I use one and a half tablespoons, but I know it's going to be broken up in a servings throughout a 9x9 nine nine, or a 9x13 casserole dish. So that's going to get divvied up when I figure out the servings for this dish. So I'm using a tablespoon and a half without fear, and I'm gonna count for the points for it, so I'm not bothered. But we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the lid on these. Actually, I'll wait to put the lid on those because I want them to get a little crispy. I like my veggies to be a little bit brown. And uh, in a second, I'll put the lid on those so they can soften up a bit. And then I'm gonna finish chopping the rest of my veggies. So, of all those vegetables that I had out, I only used probably 10 grape tomatoes. This is how much broccoli is left out of one head. I only use one squash and some of the uh, peppers. I, I tend to get overzealous when I'm getting vegetables out to put in either an omelet or a stir fry or a casserole or whatever. I think, oh, let's do lots of vegetables. But then, you know, there's only so much room. This is what we've got. This is what's left besides that. You can see there's a lot of mushrooms. And we like that because a lot of these casseroles call for sausage or meat. And, you know, we're moving away from pork and beef. We haven't, we ate some while we were in Ohio, but for the most part, we've been staying away from it. Um, and the, the mushrooms really give it kind of a meaty taste. So that's why we like to add a bunch of mushrooms. So I'm going to wait until the squash and everything is uh, softer. And then I'm going to add all this to the mix. Okay, now I've added everything else. The spinach, the tomatoes, the mushrooms. Thinking about it now, I could have probably added the mushrooms when I had the broccoli and the squash in there because it would have given them a nice little crisp to them. Um, but it's going to be fine. Keep in mind you don't have to cook everything completely because it's going to bake in the casserole afterwards as well. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on this because um, this spinach is taking up a lot of room in the pan. And when I put the lid on, it's going to break that spinach down. So I'm going to do that and then I'll start preparing my casserole dish. Isn't that pretty? Look at all the colors. For those of you who don't like vegetables, this is an excellent, excellent way to get in some vegetables because this just ends up becoming so delicious. <clears throat> you don't even really realize you're eating vegetables, but look at all the vegetables I'm getting into this casserole. It's gonna be bomb. I'm also, I've added some minced onion, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna add some minced garlic. You can season this however you like. If you want cayenne pepper or red pepper or whatever you like, you can season this. This is a blank palette, so season it however you like. Sorry, one second. 
Okay, so while the veggies are cooking, and you can see they're cooking down nicely and getting a little uh, moisture, so I'm going to take this lid off now. I don't want it to be too soupy. Um, but in the meantime, I've taken a nine and a quarter by 13 and a quarter pan. You can reduce this to whatever size you want. Again, this is not an exact science. Um, I sprayed it with uh, Pam and then took some double fiber bread. I like double fiber because I like my fiber and it's two points a slice. Um, and I just kind of broke it up and layered it on the bottom. And what's going to happen next is this kind of gives it a nice little crust at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to layer this on top of it. And then we'll pour the um, egg mixture over it and I'll show you how to make the egg mixture now. <clears throat> so here's part of my egg mixture. I've taken, I buy our egg whites um, in the containers already whited for us. I know that can get really expensive, um, but it's just more convenient for me. And I found if you have a super Walmart near you, uh, Walmart tends to have good prices on their cartons of egg whites. Um, so <laughs> these are super low in points. If you're doing calorie counting, they're 30 calories for a quarter of a cup. So it's practically nothing. And it's got so much protein and six grams of protein for just a quarter of a cup. So I took one and a half cups of egg whites and two whole eggs. Two whole eggs are two points a piece. So I'm doing two. And then I'm going to take about three quarters of a cup of milk. I'm using low fat. Um, you can use whatever you like. I'm just going to whisk all that together. Now, this is the time to add any liquid. So if you wanted to add some sriracha or some salsa or something like that, you could add that in there as well. I'm just going to mix this up very well. And that's it. So there's the egg mixture. Okay. So we have the egg mixture. We have the bread um, in the bottom of the pan with some Pam. And we have our veggies, which are done, in my opinion. And I'm going to start assembling this. So... The veggies go on top of the bread, and then the egg gets poured over the veggies and the bread. And I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so there, now the veggies are over the bread. Um, as you can see, I've made about the perfect amount for this 13 and a quarter by 9 and a quarter. You can customize this to however you like. If you're a single person who lives at home alone, you could do literally a small little container with one slice of bread and just enough veggies. But... I have to tell you, this reheats extremely well. So we cut it up into servings. So it'll probably be about 12 servings out of this. Um, three, two cuts this way, so we have three rows, and then four this way. Um, <clears throat> but this reheats extremely well, and the Persian and I eat this all through the week. So customize it as much as you want, but you're going to want more. So <laughs> make it a little bit bigger than you think you want. Now time for the eggs. Okay, a word to the wise when pouring this egg mixture in. If you look here, there's not as much egg mixture as there is down here. Now, one would think that you could pour it over the middle and it would evenly distribute, but it doesn't because it's got the bread and the veggies and stuff to get around. So I'm just going to tilt this. I may actually end up pouring... This is the biggest one I've done to date. Um, so I think I'm going to have to pour some more egg white over it. I'm going to measure it before I do so that I make sure. So I'm going to do another half cup of egg white. And I'm not going to mix that with the milk. I'm just going to pour it straight on. So now I've got two cups of egg white. And I'm just going to pour that kind of evenly over, focusing on this end. And that's it. I'm going to cover this with foil. And I'm going to bake it at 375. I'm going to start it at about 35 minutes, and then I'm going to check it. You don't want to overcook it, uh, but you definitely don't want to undercook it. So it should be, a knife should come out clean from the middle. So I'm going to start it at 35 minutes and see where I go. I tend to put it on one of these in case of any bubbling over, but since this is the biggest pan I've used so far, I don't think I'm going to have that problem. But anyway, if you wanted to, you could add cheese on this too. Just make sure you cover it with foil for the most part of the baking. And then at the last maybe 10 minutes, I take the foil off to let it brown. Okay, in the oven it goes. Okay, so here's the finished product. It ended up taking 35 minutes and then 10 minutes with the foil off. So this is what it's supposed to look like, a little bit spongy. Vegetables are nice and done. This is good. It smells amazing. If you wanted to, you could sprinkle some cheese on here. 
I don't because I want I want less points, and the sriracha tends to add a lot of flavor for me when I put it on after. Um, the Persian will probably put cheese on his, but it's delicious. If you try it, let me know.